Happy Tuesday! My name is Alan. My name is Nick. And welcome into, into the dungeon. dungeon. This week we pick up with our heroes after the aftermath of that ferocious spider battle in the Dwarven Halls. True shrubberies left with victory, but one which almost came at a cost, as at one point Murkub, Fabian and Shrew had been paralysed. We now find ourselves in a small clearing, bathed in the faint light of the setting sun, with the soft murmur of a babbling brook, where our heroes have stumbled across an enchanting sight, a figure draped in verdant robes kneeling amongst a tapestry of vibrant wildflowers and aromatic herbs. This figure they had recognized as a tiefling, his tiefling heritage evident in his striking features, with the skin a rich shade of deep crimson reminiscent of smoldering embers, contrasting with the vibrant greens of the surrounding woods. He had not yet noticed true shrubberies when we left off last week, and this is where today's episode begins. Hmm, that's an odd-looking creature there. Is it a, a satyr? One of those wonderful... Woodland creatures. I believe that is a tiefling. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. Of, yes, I saw quite a few of them uh, in now winter, but from this distance, it it seemed quite short. Oh, it's kneeling. Wait. He seems to be collecting herbs. Mm. I think we should give him a wide berth. What do you think? Actually, as you say that, give me a perception check. 22. As you say that out loud, and you're keeping an eye on him, you notice that his movements are very deliberate, each one carrying an air of purpose and contemplation. You see that he's simply armed with a pair of scissors. Those, those look quite dangerous. What do you guys think? Is he foe, or is he friend? He seems to be alone. Hmm, maybe we can ambush him. Perhaps. Do we know what we're dealing with here, though? I've never met a creature like this before. No, no, no. I've, I've met a few in Neverwinter. A few rowdy ones. Scoundrels. Of the night. Good for nothing. But I mean, look at Murkub. You can't judge the book by its cover, can you? We could try to sneak past, but if he spots us, perhaps he thinks we're trying to ambush him. I'm rather tired. I don't know if I could take on another fight. Hmm, no. And it's getting late. But if we surprise him, maybe he attacks us. Let me, let me see. I want to watch him for a bit longer to try and make out what he's doing. Like, does he seem like... A creature of the woods? Does he live here? Is he maybe a druid? Does he cast a spell? Does he do anything of that sort? Something that could give me an idea of his intentions here in the woods. Lay low here in, in some bushes and let's observe him for a little bit. Let's see what he gets up to. So you want them to hide or just to stay where they are? want to hide like in the bushes, observing this creature. Okay, we'll ask you to roll for stealth and blindly. Shoe shrubberies then. Start to hide. Carefully, silently, although Sister Gorel's clothes get caught on the twigs, there's a slight snap, but this tiefling doesn't seem to notice that. He continues, delicately, collecting herbs and wild flowers. You notice now as you're studying him, that the light shines playfully of what appear to be delicate rings on his fingers. You continue to watch him, and his presence exudes an undeniable aura of mystery. Damn it! I'm a sucker for mysteries! I'm itching. I'm itching to go. I'm almost stepping out of the bush. <laughs> good, good. You continue watching his movements. He almost seems to be talking with some of the plants. Hold on. I recognize this. It's a druid. It's one of mine. I've gone quite loud now. Wait, wait here. I need to talk to him. And I rush out of the bushes, almost stumbling over myself. Hey, friend! You see his head turn and his gaze meet yours. He breaks a warm... A dry smile that seems to hold both welcome and curiosity. What brings you to this lovely patch of the woods? <laughs> well, perhaps I should be asking you the same question, given that I live here and I have never seen you here. Oh, you live here? Where is here exactly? In the middle of the forest? 
Well, I'm not about to disclose exactly where I live if I don't know who you are. Oh, I am Shrew of Shrew's Shrubberies. I'm sure you've heard me. I'm uh, the savior of the Stone Circle, yes. I've dealt with Gorfuck, the Thunderbore, countless of orcs from the tal- those Talos worshippers, yes, yes, Anchorites are the names. Gijomas brother, hero of Thunderling, who oh, I've go by many titles, whisperer of animals and plants alike. What are you doing here, then? I'm just passing by, and I happened to see you share similar qualities as mine. Dashing looks, and certain spells, like talking to plants. I saw you murmuring, whispering soft nothings to these flowers. And a halfling is alone in these dangerous woods. Well, no, not exactly. My friends are back there. I just didn't want to startle you. We are a mighty bunch. But you're not answering my questions. Are you a fellow druid? You notice that around this tiefling, there are an array of plants and ingredients carefully arranged. Delicate silver leaf blossoms shimmering with a faint, iridescent glow. The petals seemingly capturing the essence of the moon's light that's now started to rise. Clusters of star berries twinkling like constellations. Sprigs of whispering ferns swaying gently. Their fronds emitting hushed sighs as if sharing secrets with the wind. Well... And he starts talking to you in Druidic, which you understand is one of your languages. I know some ways of the Druid, but uh, I'm no adventurer as you appear to be. You look like you've seen some rough days. Yes, yes, quite, quite a few. This, uh, this is your, your face is quite swollen. Yes, I've been in a battle room just now, actually. Um, fought some spiders and uh, nothing to worry about. But this is thrilling and <laughs> in, in, invigorating. I've never spoken to someone in Druidic before, not since I last left the the Mere of Deadmen. The Mere of Deadmen? Yes, that's where I hail from. My my Druidic um, teacher lives there, in Cinemus. You are a long way from home. Yes, a long way from home. But you say that you're no adventurer. No. What is it that you do around here, then? Well, I collect plants, herbs, flowers... And my wife and I craft them into potions. Hmm. Potions? Interesting. I thought Adabra was the only potions maker and seller around these places. Oh, I have heard of Adabra. Hmm. A master from potion the... maker, indeed. From Fandling. From Fandling, yes. From the hill with a windmill. Umbridge Hill. It's been a long time since I've been to Fandling. My wife is the one that handles our occasional business there. Hmm, 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 hmm. And tell me, are you... Are you here, and are you tasked with the upkeep of this forest and and defend it from evil and aberrations and all things unnatural? Well, this patch of the woods is my home. Yes, yes. But, as I said, I'm no adventurer. No, no, but let's say something unnatural creeps up into your patch of the woods. What do you do? Do you, do you deal with it? Do you have like a conclave, a circle of other druids that you summon and you all go together as a band of druids? It's just... Me and my wife here. Is your wife a druid as well? Yes, she is. Then together you attack this aberration, or is it... How, how does it work? I, I, well, don't, we, I don't really work with druids. We try to avoid conflicts at all costs. Oh, avoid conflicts. So so if something appears, let's say a manticore, for example, appears in the woods and is starting to throw everything off balance, what does a druid like you and your wife do about it? You needed to learn a lot. Well, uh, it's the first druid I've met in the wild. Well, hopefully, there will be no manticores. Well, well, okay, let's say there is one. Well, I suppose if our home is threatened, and you say you're a druid. Yes. You know the ways of turning into beasts. Yes, of course. I suppose we would have no choice but to to protect our homeland. <laughs> very good, very good. You notice that his eyes are a mesmerizing shade of gold, shimmering like molten metal, capturing the essence of fire's warmth and intensity. They appear to hold a wisdom born from years of connection with the natural world, and his gaze is both thoughtful and piercing. Oh, how rude of me. You mentioned your name was Shrew. Yes, yes, Shrew. My name is Malicious, and he extends a strong, calloused hand from years of tendering to the land and crafting elixirs. Well met, Shrew. I extend my hand as well and shake it. Well met, indeed. It's interesting to see another druid here in these parts of the woods. We don't get many... Folk visiting out here. Hmm. What were you telling the plants? 
Because, um, you're supposed to kind of take care of them, the wild plants, and, you know, not pick them and kill them, but it's a bit, it's a bit odd for a druid to be destroying the place he calls home. Well, these have been grown by us, and I was precisely doing that. I was giving my apologies to these plants for having to take them. Hmm, do they shout when you pick them? Not that I'm aware. Do they say anything as they're picked? Like, no, please don't. <laughs> I've, I can't say I've ever heard them scream. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Very good, very good. Anyway. And what brings a druid like you here? You said you'd been to the Circle of Thunder. Yes, yes, I'm just making my way back home to... Well, I, I keep calling it home, humorously, but it's not really my home. Ooh. We are helping Thunderling in these troubled times. You see, there's a dragon about, and perhaps you've noticed. A dragon? A dragon. <laughs> hmm, yes, and it, it's displacing animals and beasts all over the place, and creatures. And I'm here protecting the surrounding woodlands, and... Is that why there's been a rabble of orcs creating trouble in the woods? Yes, yes, partly so, yes. But we've dealt with that problem. You, you're orc-free. <laughs> Your forest is orc-free now, thanks to me and a few friends of mine. I've also made friends with centaurs. I'm yet to ride one, but it's one for the bucket list. Don't you worry about that. Um, and yes, yes, everything's dandy now. But I'm, I want to present you to my friends, my trustworthy and loyal friends. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me call them. I turn back and I shout out to everyone. Are you doing this in common or druidic? I change to common. Upon hearing you call out, your companions step out into the clearing. What an odd symbol of creatures. Badger, gnome, an orc. Is he a prisoner or a friend? Now, now, now. I don't like that tone. Well, you surely must be fed up of people judging you by your looks. He's a friend, of course. He wouldn't be coming with me. If he weren't... Well, he's kind of been creating quite a bit of trouble in these woods. Mm, he's one of the good ones. Roll a persuasion check. That's a one, but I cannot roll ones, thankfully. <laughs> Fifteen total. Well, I suppose if it was a threat, you would have probably jumped out to attack me by now. No, don't worry, friend. No threats here. We are all good folk. Come closer, friends. Let me present you to the great druid, Malice. Well, I wouldn't say great. Pleasure to meet you. This here is Fenner, great cleric. Very powerful cleric and healer of all kinds of wounds and stuff. Very good. A pleasure to meet you, Malice. She extends her hand out, which he takes and shakes. And her little friend here, companion, little badger called Caspus. Very good friend of us. Very cute. Very good. Who's cute indeed. Then here we have Murkup the Great. Can't say you look too great. You're... Actually, all your faces are quite swollen. We've been through a tough battle, but again we cleared your woods of a dreadful spider. The mother of spiders, actually, and all her spawn, evil spawns. Is that by the dwarven ruins? Yes, you know of it. <laughs> it's uh, not a place you should go wandering in unprepared. No, we've learned that the hard way, but now it's clear of any any nuisance. You can go in by yourself if you want. Well, I have no need. Hmm. Uh, well met, friend. Yes, yes, Murk of the Great, yes. And then we have Sister Garel, the lovely Sister Garel. How could I how could I leave her for third? She saved us from certain doom. We are, we were to turn into were rats. But she, with her graceful magic and the favour of her gods, saved us, and here we are today. The pleasure of malice. Malice, please, not malice. And here we have Fabian. Fabian Fabian the Defender of Shu shrubberies, the savior of Shu from man eating skeletal horses and all sorts of evil things. He forgets that. And Fabian the Newt as well. Yes, I've been Newt once. <laughs> oh, you are a druid too. Oh, no, no. It's a, it's a long story. It's a long story. Well, my friend, you wouldn't happen to have a shelter for the night, would you? There you go. Inviting yourself into people's homes again. Well, I'm just saying what. Everybody's thinking. Well, you, it's late. Yes, but you're too rash, Fabian. You need to have a bit of more tact in these situations. You just don't go asking a stranger if you can stay in their home. Please, you're embarrassing us. It's all right. It's no, it's no bother. My wife isn't home at the moment anyway, so 
There's plenty of space. No, we we, we do not we wouldn't want to encroach. But Fabian is right. We we probably couldn't do with a good rest under a good roof. Well yes, sir. Just give me a few more moments to collect my ingredients. Please feel free to, to sit. Can I assist you? I'm I'm rather intrigued to what you're doing. Well these ingredients that I'm collecting. They can create a potent elixir. One that can bring visions of the past and glimpses of possible futures. Mm -hmm. Interesting. This is powerful indeed. Yes, it's not for the faint of heart, though. You can get quite addicted to them. Mm. Listen, if I if I gather the ingredients necessary for one, would you make one for me? Well, you'd have to return when my wife is here. She's the one that understands the the recipes properly. Now where's your wife? Well, she's in Fandolin, or hopefully on her way back. Oh, oh, oh. when did she go to Fandolin? Um, about five days ago now. She usually frequents there to sell some of our wares. Kind of pull Murkop to one side. Murkop, in hushed tones. When when was the attack to Fandolin exactly? My memory serves me correct. I've been about eight days ago. Oh, oh yeah, uh, that's fine then. She's fine, she's fine. Has she said that? In hushed tones, or has his voice got louder? No, still in hushed tones, still talking to Morkub. If there's no reason to worry this guy, I won't. Is there anything the matter, friend? No, no, just thinking that how long, if she's there now, how long it would take her to come back, just figuring out the distance from here to Fandling. I'm headed over there myself. From here, probably two more days' travel. Mm -hmm. Very well, well... I'll help you gather these ingredients, as I said, and that way we could retire back to your house sooner. After saying that, I want to use my new chain to cast to speak with plants. Okay, so you and Malasis continue gathering the supplies that he's been getting. You said you were going to Fandlin. Yes, we are on our way there right now. I'll leave you see my wife. Please tell us to hurry. I miss her and I worry. Is she taking longer than usual? Not necessarily, but there's been so much trouble around. And now you've said that there's a dragon there as well. I'm slightly on edge. Mm, don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure she's fine. The, the dragon is staying up the mountain for now. I haven't seen it in days. Oh, that's reassuring. You know her if you see her. She's tiefling like me. Hmm. My dear Cookie. Cookie, you say? Is that like a nickname? Oh. Oh, is that her name? It's like an affectionate name you call her, like Cookie. No, no, that's her name. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, yes, Cookie. She has quite a unique affinity for plants. Hmm. Hence why she's the one that crafts our potions. Are you doing anything with your spell that you cast to speak with plants? Just want to hear out for any screams or shouts or pleas of mercy from the plants as they're being picked. As you're collecting these materials, you don't hear any screams. Mm hmm. This is reassuring, yes. You said you were from the Mirror of Deadmen. Yes, well, that's where I started my training as a druid. I don't have a circle, really. You know, like a group of druids. It's just me and my mentor. A bit like me and my cookie. Well, yes, exactly. Exactly. I was hoping to find, like, a big group of druids. One of these days, in one of these forests, perhaps they would aid me in defeating the dragon, but no, I, I haven't been as fortunate. Well, I hope you don't expect me to help you with a dragon. No, no, I see that you like picking flowers, not picking fights. So it's okay. Well, I think that's everything I need. Would you like to spend the night then? Of course, if, if we are no burden to you, it would be lovely. Malasis then beckons you to follow him, and he leads you to the edge of this clearing. After a short walk, you catch the scent of a burning fire and the soft glow of light coming from this cottage, which is a sight to behold fusion of natural and magical elements seemingly intertwined. You also hear a babbling brook as you realize that it stands on the edge of this, its walls woven from living vines and adorned with flowers which seem to illuminate in the night. Please, come in, come in. Make yourself comfortable. I'll put something on the pot. You look rather worse for wear. Somewhat hungry, if I may say so. Yes, now that you mention it, I'm starving. I, I hadn't thought of that since we left the, the ruins. As you walk inside, the scent of herbs and earth mingle with the soft glow of the fire, casting a warm and inviting atmosphere. Shelves line the walls, laden with jars of vibrant powders, gleaming crystals, and intricately carved wooden containers, holding the fruits 
of Malasis's labour. I hope you like broth, because that's pretty much all we eat here. Well, I'm actually... I was hoping you had a sausage or two. It's been a while. and But uh, uh, broth will do. Broth will do. I don't want to seem ungrateful. No, broth will do. Fine. You've got quite the collection of bottles and jars here. Yes. This is uh, the work we do. The cottage looks lovely. Mystical, even. Thank you. It's... It's a home that my wife and I have built. Mm-hmm. Manasis makes his way to the pot that's sat on the fire. You see him start mixing some vegetables and herbs and water. He sits there stirring the pot. Oh, I've been rather fortunate. Two nights under a roof. Could get used to this again. Mm, yes, it almost seems too good to be true. It's as if something awful has to happen. Well, something awful just did happen. Mm. Suppose you're right. My stomach's a little queasy still as well. I want to walk up to Malasis. You know, just see the brew. See what he's cooking there in the pot. Just kind of go up to him and talk a bit. So, are you the chef of the house? The cook? Do you, you know? Are you the one that makes the food? And all that. Well, Cookie and I take it in turns. But as she's not here, then, yes, tonight, the duty of preparing a meal is on me. Mm -hmm -hmm. I want to inspect the broth. Yeah, you can see that there's carrots, onions, some herbs. Definitely looks solely vegetarian. Doesn't seem sinister in any way or form, right? No, it smells delicious here. Mm. Mm. Can I do like an insight check on the whole situation? Oh, oh I was going to say on the broth or on Malasis? Like everything. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole, this situation, like Malasis whilst he's cooking his broth and if he may have ulterior motives. Yeah, go for it. Roll insight. Total of 23. Nothing seems amiss to you. He seems genuine the way he's talked to you. He seems very fond of his wife. Everything you're seeing inside this cottage seems to add up to his story that he collects herbs and flowers and plants and that they brew them into potions. It doesn't appear to be anything that would arouse suspicion. I stick a finger in the broth and taste it. I didn't see you wash your hands. I hope you've not spoiled the broth now with spider goop. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I kind of cleaned them in a leaf before. You know how we druids do? We clean our hands in, in moist leaves. You know how we do it. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist. I'm so hungry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, Is that I, what your mentor taught you? <laughs> yes, how do you clean your bum? <laughs> Not something I've given thought to in the campaign. <laughs> I usually use the wide leaves for that one. You know, it gets more, more of the mess, to put it one way. <laughs> Perhaps not a conversation with dinner, but... Well, we're not eating yet. Don't be so squeamish. You're a druid. You live in the woods. or well, not exactly, but you should know how to survive in the wilds. <laughs> well, yes. How does that taste you? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Very, very nice. They haven't had a broth like this in ages. The one Toblum serves up in in, in Thunderling is, is quite bland compared to this one. But don't tell him if you ever go there. <laughs> don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. Mm, thank you. Do you know what would go good with this? A few sausages would make the flavour pop. Perhaps, but my wife and I don't eat meat. No, you don't. No. Hmm. Is that is that the way of the truth? Well, they are animals that... We commune with at times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, you also commune with plants. And now we yeah, have and vegetables and... They're not sentient. No, no. Well, they are when you talk to them and you cast that spell on them. Yes, but the, but it's, the spell it's like, makes them sentient. Well, yes, but, you know, the animals, they are... They... Anyway, let's let's sit down and have a... Let's sit down and, and have a nice meal. Let's not talk. Let's not talk about this... This anymore. <laughs> Very well. It'll take me a little while longer to get this just right. And just sit down. A bit more serious than I was a second ago. What is the matter, issue? Nothing, look, nothing, nothing. You look very, very serious. Nothing, nothing. I'm just a bit overwhelmed at the moment. A bit overwhelmed, Sister Garel. As I fan myself with my hand. Would you like me to heal you? No, no, I'm not hurt in that way, but I'm just a bit... Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. There's just a lot of things going around in my head at the moment. But thank you for your kind assistance and gesture. True. Yes. 
You can you can speak with animals. Yes, yes. Why can't I speak with Caspers? I'm sure Sigurdjian told me that he'd bestow that gift on me. Hmm. Well, I, I told you that I would teach you, so you don't have to worry about it. You'll be speaking to Caspers soon enough. We, we can start today, actually. But I don't know. I, I thought you, you would be able to. I mean, what's the point of giving you a friend who you, you can't talk to? Perhaps I'm doing it right. Well, what are you doing? I'm talking to him in common. But... You need to speak to him in Badger. Why would you speak to a Badger in common? That's ridiculous. But I don't know how to speak Badger. Like this. And I stop on my tracks and realize that I haven't prepared the spell. And the chain that granted me the possibility of casting it has already been used up for the day with Speak With Plants. What's wrong, Shu? Hmm. Oh, no. I've, I can't cast the spell right now. I don't, I don't have it prepared. We're going to have to wait till the morning for the lesson. But think... This, this is what I normally do. Imagine yourself as a badger burrowing in one of your little dens. And you get home to a cute family of little badgerlings. They nuzzle up to you. You feel their slimy skin because they don't have hair yet. They're little badgerlings. And they start suckling on your titties. I don't know if you're talking about true. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you do any of that. Are you suggesting that I nurse Caspers? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying, put yourself in a scenario where you are a badger. Obviously, you're the mother badger, so you need to you need to provide and nurture your youngling. But whatever you do, you can be a badger, and you can be, I don't know, hunting for food, if you wish. Or you can be burrowing. You can do whatever you want. But put yourself in a position of where a badger would be. And what a badger would do, and speak, and you'll see, it'll come out, eventually. Concentrate on the badger essence. I'll try that, true. Mm. Thank you. Okay, go on, let me see. Oh, you want me to do it right now? Yes, there's no better time like the now. You see Fanna close her eyes, start wriggling her nose. All right, I'm pretending I'm borrowing. Caspers, can you, can you hear me? You see Caspers just looking up at her, nuzzling her. Caspers, I'm Fanna. Can you understand what I'm saying? And Casper just lies there with his head against her hand, looking up at her. Doesn't seem to react. It's not working, true. Close your eyes. They are closed. Try again. This will be one of your pranks, true. Casper, did Sergeant send you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try and make a performance check and try and mimic Casper's voice, although she doesn't know what it sounds like, I imagine. No, she doesn't. Okay, roll a. Roll a performance check. Actually, no. Roll a deception check. That's a total of 19. You're rolling high today. On that note, I can share now that your stealth checks were a 16 for Shrew, a 20 for Fenna, natural 20 by the way, an 18 for Fabian, and a 19 for Woodco. Nice. And you rolled low for Sister Girl, I imagine. Cause Sist- she yeah, Sister Girl was a 3, and Caspers was a 10. Hmm. And then you rolled high in your perception as well. Yep. I wish I rolled high on my fight, so... Is that really you, Caspers? I hesitate, because it's so cruel, but... Yes, Mammy, it's me. Mammy, you're not your mother. You see Sister Gruel scowling at you, shaking her head. I start sweating, slightly. So you understand me, then, if I speak common? No, no, you are speaking better right now. The great shrew has taught you very well. He's, he's quite the astounding. <laughs> my voice kind of changes a bit there, it's quite the outstanding druid, El Kijoma's brother. That's Say. enough, Shrew, Shrew, that's enough. <laughs> Fenite's one of his childish pranks again. <laughs> oh, Shrew! And she's... I was trying to make it obvious enough. Uh, it's all in good, good humor and good, I guess. You know. 16, does that hit? <laughs> hit me? Hit me? Yes. <laughs> yes. You feel Fenner's palm strike you across the cheeks. Hey, that's just plain mean, sir. sir I'm, 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 I'm sorry. It, it started. I've come to you for help. No, no, no. And no. You're mocking me. No, I'm not mocking you. Fair enough. I probably deserve that. I'll, uh, I'll grant you that. But I, I, the, 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 the advice I gave you was sound advice. But don't take it to heart. It'll take time. Don't take it so seriously. Just carry on and try, and you'll get there eventually. As I, I promised you, I would teach you. And right now, I'm tapped out. But. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll begin. I'm sorry, it was it was just a joke. 
That's a mean one. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. After a short while, Malasis presents each of you with a small bowl and a spoon of the broth. I hope it's just to your liking, friends. Eat up. And you see that he starts digging into his bowl. Yeah, I do the same. I start scoffing up the broth, almost not even breathing. You hear Murkob slurping as you look over your shoulder and see him literally drinking it from the bowl rather than using his spoon. Would it be that you, <laughs> your friend likes it? I'm glad. Yes, it's very nice. Best broth I've had. Perhaps before you go, I could interest you in some of our ways. Our stock is rather low as Googie took most of our goods to Vandalin. But perhaps I have some things that would aid you in your quest. Yes, I'm sure you could. Perhaps in the morning we could discuss. Oh, yeah, of course. Where are my manners? You and your friends are tired. Indeed, we are exhausted, rather. Well, you can rest easy here. We'll be safe. Thank you. Just be careful on your journey tomorrow. This part of the woods still dangerous. The spiders may be gone, but goblins are known to frequent here. And also gnolls. Gnolls? Here in Netherwinter? Yes. Hmm, I, I, I wouldn't have guessed. They can be quite tricksy, often leaving traps around, so tread with care. Hmm. Thanks for the information, friend. Well, I'll excuse myself then. I'll... <sighs> in a long day. It's time for that I get to bed. Uh, sleep, sleep well. Where, where exactly should we like to sleep? You know, here in the sitting room? Or? Yes, well, I, <laughs> I don't quite fancy sharing a bed with you all. No, no, I was just pondering if you perhaps had a few more rooms, but well, well, this is not an end, of course, of course. You may spread your bedrolls out here. The fire will keep you warm. Thank you, thank you very much. Do you think we should keep watch? Sure. No, no. From outside, you mean? Yes. From possible attacks. I, I'm a bit on edge now that he said there's goblins and gnolls. Well, he said on on the way tomorrow, traveling. He said we would be safe here. I don't imagine... I mean, this, this house doesn't seem to have been under siege or anything. I imagine we'd be safe enough. I, we could do with a good rest. All of us. Oh, yes, I, as I said before, I feel a bit queasy. Mm, yes, let's, let's just go to bed. And with that, True Shrubberies goes to sleep for the night. After seven hours, you find yourself awakened and see Malasis adding some logs to the fire. I trust you slept well. Mm. Mm, yes, very well, actually. Nothing beats a good rest indoors beside a warm hearth. Thank you very much. Yes, well, this time of the year is especially cold. I take it you'll be making preparations to be on your way back to Fundland then. Yes, well, as I said yesterday, we can talk about your wares and perhaps we could find something useful for our fight with the dragon. And then we'll be on our way. You wouldn't want to overstay our welcome, of course. You're welcome to stay, but it sounds like you have more pressing matters. Hmm. As I said yesterday, Cookie is taking most of our ways, but I have a few potions here. I have a, an elixir of health. Hmm. This is a great potion. It will cure any disease you have. Really? It removes blindness, deafness, paralysis. Hmm, that would have come in handy yesterday. And even poison. Poison, you see. What about curses? No, it does not remove curses. Mm -hmm. Well, well, that sounds like an interesting brew indeed. How, how much are you willing to take for it? The best I could do is a hundred gold. Hmm. Let me, let me check my pockets. I have other potions too. Well, I see. I, it would seem I, I do not have quite enough for that. Perhaps you're willing to trade for one of these boys. And obviously I must be carrying the battle axes I took from the dead orcs yeah, on yeah. my back or something. <laughs> well, you, you've got one. Fen has got one and Faven's got one. Right. And I take out the battle axe. It's silvered. It's a very good piece. It would help you defend yourself. Uh, it's metal. Forget it. I put it back. Well, it's not something I would use, but perhaps something we can trade in Thunderland. Oh, yes. Good idea. Good idea. This will set you back. I want to I wanna try and figure out what, like from my dealings with other merchants and that, what would one battle axe, silvered battle axe, cost as best as I can. All right, give me a wisdom check. Nine. You're not overly familiar with either smithing or weapons, but you know that silver can go for quite some coin. You can also imagine that 
the price of silvering a weapon would also include not only the cost of the silver itself, but the time and expertise needed. Although you are aware as well that these have been rather crudely silvered by orcs and not by fine dwarven or elvish hands. You'd also know, particularly having been in Fandolin and visiting the Lineshill Costa, that a battle axe would normally go at retail price for 10 gold pieces, obviously not including the cost of the silver. At your best estimates, you can only assume that this sort of an axe wouldn't fetch as high a price as the cost of the potion he's offering you. Having a look at this battle axe in your hands, you feel that perhaps 50 gold would be a fair price. Hmm. Yes. So, as I was saying, yes. I think 60. I think this quality silvered axe would would go for 60 gold. Yes, yes. Sir. A fair price, I think. I don't know much about weapons. Let me see it. Oh, of course, yeah. I used to be a traveling salesman. I know a thing or two about bargains, and this, my friend, is one. <sighs> In the hills outside of Thunderling, where the ogres roam, that's where I practiced my trade. <sighs> Don't worry about the blemishes. You, you kind of, you know. It's not the finest. No, no. It's hawkish. It's not exquisite, but it's rare. I'll a tell you what. collector would pay double. If we value the three axes together at mm -hmm. 150. What? 150? You're taking my arm and my leg? 150 for three? You just said 60 for one. A small discount for a friend that gave you shelter mm. and warmth and a full belly. Yes, yes. That, that sounds fair when you put it that way. But let me ask you, what other wares do you have before we strike a deal? Well, I have this potion of fire breath. Mm. Fire breath? Like a dragon? Yes. Is that the kind of dragon that you're facing? A fire dragon? I'm facing a nice dragon, actually. So we would be stronger than it with this fire breath. Fire beats size. Mm, this one is a little more costly. This one, the best I could do to you is 120 gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's say, do you have anything else? Or is this, this all you have for sale right now? I have one elixir of health and one potion of fire breath. I also have three potions. Of greater healing. Oh, oh, oh. oh, and how much do those go for? These are costly. Um, These Adabra would sell for 150 gold. Well, I've got the Adabra discount, I tell you. The rest I could do with with you for these are 110. Mm, that's fair, that's fair. Okay, so let me... I'm not I'm not very good at numbers, but let me... let me Give me a second. I'm going to crunch some numbers here. Yeah, and I start like a stick a tongue out and start counting my fingers. So if I were to buy the whole lot... All five potions? Yes. How much would that take me back? Well, that would be 540 gold. Mm. Well, would you look at the time? <laughs> it's getting rather late. Mm, let's see what I can do here. So you said you said for the free axes you would we'd be willing to pay 150, you said. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit short still. Let's see. Let's see what I can... Let's see what I can offer. Well, well, I've got 69 gold here, so 150 and 69. That takes me up to 219. Almost there. Still more than a little short. Hold on, I've got other wares. I'm a traveling merchant for a reason. I thought you said you were a druid. That you used to be a well, yes, wandering but, merchant. You know, yeah. these things stick, stick with you. How about a fighter? You can have a, a fighter to defend you in case... Fabian here is. He goes for a fair price of 20 gold. Are you seriously trying to sell me through? <laughs> no, of course not. Don't be daft. It's a joke. It's a joke. Um, it would appear that I have left my big bag of money in, back in Thundling, and it would appear we cannot offer you more than what, what I currently have. So with 219 gold, I can get a potion of healing, the greater healing, and one other one, right? That's correct. Hmm, I'll take the fire one. Very well. You should be careful when you drink it. You'll be able to exhale fire up to 30 feet away. Yes, I like it. Well, pleasure doing business with you. And if you don't mind, before I leave, I, I want to meditate a bit. I want to commune with the wild. I don't mean taking a shit. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, preparing my spells before we leave. Very well. So Shu's going to prepare his spells then? 
Yeah, you step out of the house, you find a little quiet spot under a tree, somewhere where a fresh breeze blows. You manage to find a, a nice place. And I start preparing my spells for the day's journey. Do you want to share with our listeners what you're preparing? Or you want to leave them as surprises? I'll share this time. can't remember what I took off, but I've prepared Pass Without a Trace. That's a new one I've prepared. Also find traps after that hint that our friend inside gave me about the gnolls and the tricky traps. And I also prepared Speak With Animals because I promised Fena I would teach her. So after yesterday night's prank I pulled on her, I want to try and make it up to her. She wasn't very happy. Not the best at pulling pranks, I must admit. So you prepare your spells. You make your way back to the cottage. You see your friends looking well rested and recovered from the battle yesterday. Right, Shrew. This axe is magical. Really? What's so magical about it? Does it speak? Oh, no. And he explains that it's a plus one great axe. He explains that it does a little more. He says that whilst he's attuned to it, his hit points maximum increases by one for each level he's attained. Mm, that will make you more resilient to dragon attacks if you do decide to join us. Well, after yesterday's battle, probably a good thing. Mm. Oh, sure. Yes. Second John spoke to me yesterday. Really? I promise it wasn't me. I wasn't making a voice or anything whilst you slept. I better not find out that it was you. No, 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 I promise. He said that I had to listen with and speak with my heart. That's what I said. Kind of. You didn't quite put it in that manner. Well, what I meant. In my words. I'm not a god. (laughs) I don't speak like gods. I've got my own ways. Anyway, sorry. And have you tried it? I don't know what he means. Whoa. Well, <laughs> again, you need to close your eyes. <sighs> Tonight when we rest. Yes. Have you prepared that spell to help me later? Yes, yes. We can start right now on our journey that way. I'll cast it right away. I cast Speak With Animals and start speaking in Badger. So as you travel, you're going to be teaching kind of the different sounds that you hear Caspers make and that you are making. Yeah, I'll be switching from common to, to Badger teaching her the most often used phrases, a few cuss words. You always need to learn cuss words first. <laughs> like that kind of stuff. So as you're preparing to leave the cottage, Malasis approaches you. Oh, farewell, friends. And I hope you have a safe journey. Farewell, and we will keep a keen eye out for your wife, Cookie. Thank you, I was going to say. You see her, please. Tell her I miss her. Yes, to hurry up. Back. Of course, you need more wares to sell. What's the marching order of your party? Fabian can go first, seeing as he's the uh, muscle of the group, shoulder to shoulder with Morkub. Fabian can use his bow to get the sense of direction so we don't get lost. Although I'm pretty good in the wilds myself, so I'll be behind them, just, you know, making sure they stay on track. Then, nah, hold on. Morkub will go at the back, the rear guard, and snuggling between we have Fena and Sister Garel, the two clerics. And of course, Caspas, right between Fena and Sister Gabriel. We want to go quietly. You know, the the lesson only takes 10 minutes, so for the 10 minutes of our journey, I'll be teaching Fena. But after that, we want to go as quietly as we can through this leg of our journey. Obviously, keep an eye, an eye out for any traps the Norns may have planted after our friend here, Malicious, gave us the, the good hint. And also keeping our eyes out and ears alert for any goblins or other such creatures. Okay, then roll me a perception check with advantage. We'll say that that's your party keeping an eye out for any traps. And are you wanting to stealth through the woods when you say that you're you're going quietly? Yes, I want to stealth through the woods and I want to cast. When I, when I feel that we are starting to venture into dangerous territory, you know, because right now, obviously, we are here at the heart, everything's fine. But when I feel we are perhaps going into dangerous parts of the woods, I want to cast Pass Without a Trace. And what does that do for our listeners? Because I believe that's the first time you're casting this. Yes, a veil of shadow and silence radiates from me, masking me and my companions from detection. For the duration, which is an hour, and I need to hold concentration, each creature I choose within 30 feet of me, including myself, has a plus 10 bonus of dexterity, stealth checks, and can't be tracked except by magical means. 
A creature that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or other traces of its passage. Okay, so you want to cast that when things look a little perilous or amiss then? That's right. Okay, I'll let you tell me then when you want to cast it, depending on what I narrate. So first off, give me that perception check then with advantage. Total of 22. Give me a blind stealth check with advantage and we'll say that the result is for your party stealth. With the sun slowly rising above the canopy, Malasis bids you farewell. After the last two days of having navigated through paths and dense foliage of the Neverwinter Woods, true shrubberies finally emerges from the shadowed undergrowth into a broader, more defined path. The air seems to lighten. You almost feel a sense of relief washing over you as you now stand upon the fringes of the Neverwinter Woods. You now know that the tribal trail is less than ten miles away. Before you lies a picturesque scene that contrasts with the wild tangle you've traversed. A rough path stretches ahead, flanked by towering trees whose branches reach skyward like ancient sentinels. The gentle rustle of leaves and the distant call of birds weave a soothing tapestry of sound, offering a momentary respite from the silence that envelops this final leg of your journey through the woods. A light breeze whispers through the now sparse leaves, carrying with it the subtle fragrance of pine and earth. The sense is both invigorating and grounding, a reminder that you've emerged from the depths of the woods into a more familiar, more navigable terrain. If you take in your surroundings, you notice patches of wild flowers dotting the trail's edges. The vibrant hues are stark contrast to the forest's deeper shades. A delicate symphony of colours bloom amid the verdant backdrop, offering a burst of life and vitality. The weather, whilst cold, is kind, with a clear sky stretching above, the pale blue expanse leading to a sense of openness and clarity to your surroundings. The trail itself now beckons you, a path that promises direction to Fandolin and ultimately to Ice by Hold inviting you to follow its course. After the trials of the past few days, this is a welcome sight. A guiding beacon, leading you out of the mysterious heart of the Neverwinter Woods and towards your ultimate quest, to rid these lands of the dragon of Icepire Peak. As you continue walking, Fabian holds up a hand, singling the rest of Shrew Shrubberies to halt. The tall grass beneath you begins to sway with a cool breeze as you catch glimpses of subtle disturbances amongst the foliage. Broken twigs and disturbed leaves hint at a presence here besides your own. Something seems off here. Give me a roll for investigation with advantage. Before I do the investigation, if you will allow me to cast a spell. Yes, you may. I want to cast Find Traps. Okay. Can you remind our listeners what it does? Yeah, it's an instantaneous spell, so it lasts for the time I cast it, I imagine. And I sense the presence of any trap within range that is within line of sight. A trap for the purpose of this spell includes anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable, which was specifically intended as such by its creator. Thus, the spell would sense an area affected by the alarm spell, a glyph of warning, or a mechanical pit trap, but it would not reveal a natural weakness in the floor, an unstable ceiling or a hidden sinkhole. This spell merely reveals that a trap is present. You don't learn the location of each trap, but you do learn the general nature of the danger posed by a trap you see. So I want to cast that from where I am, and then I'll make the investigation check. Total of 13. So with the magic spell you've cast, you do sense that there are traps nearby. And as you kneel down beside a cluster of bushes, you see a series of finely woven snares, thin Almost invisible threads stretch across the path, cunningly placed to trip any unwary traveller. He notices that each thread is adorned with dried leaves and bits of forest debris, camouflaging the trap from all but the most observant of eyes. Just beyond the snares, you spot another hazard, a hidden pitfall, the leaves and dirt carefully spread over to conceal, a ten-foot hole, telltale signs of disturbance, evident as the edges of the pits have been subtly disturbed revealing their treacherous nature. You also sense that further along the path is another trap, which you sense is another mechanical trap. Do I see anything hiding? Any locations where entities could be hiding? Any rustlings on trees or bushes? Any disturbance on boulders or rocks? There are some trees around, some boulders and rocks. Give me a perception check. I'll say this with advantage as well as you and your party are looking around. 13. To your left. Amongst a few trees, you hear 
some grunts. As you turn your head to look in that direction, you see a disheartening scene. Humanoid figure, hangs suspended upside down from a snare trap, their foot caught securely in the twisted vines and crude rope. How far away is this figure? It's about a hundred feet from you. They don't seem to have noticed you. Do I see what it is? Is it a humanoid, a uh, human, a uh, norc? It appears humanoid to you from where you are. You can investigate it if you wish. Yeah. Alright, roll me an investigation then. Eleven. From this distance, and amongst the trees, branches, and leaves, you can't quite tell what this creature is. You'll have to get a little bit closer if you wish to get a better look at it. Not a- about to do that yet, but how far from each other are the traps that I detected? Thirty feet. I want to try to circumvent those traps that I noticed. Yeah, you can do so with ease. Slowly and stealthily, I want to go towards that hanging humanoid. I want to cast Pass Without a Trace on my group first. Okay, so cast a spell. Okay, so roll Stealth with advantage, because you've you got your boots. No need for a blind roll. And narrate the outcome immediately. Remember I add plus 10 bonus to this, to every creature that was in my sphere of influence. It's just you moving though now, yeah? Well, no, we all want to go. Okay. Total of 18, thanks to the plus 10. 18 with the plus 10? Yep. With advantage? Yep, I rolled a 5 and a 6. Why are you going sure? Follow me to that person hanging there off a vine. Oh, I don't realize that. Yes, but individual seems in a bit of a situation. I just want to get close and see what this is all about. Be careful, as there are certain traps lying ahead of us. I've been able to detect three. Keep your eyes peeled for any more around in this area. This must be the Tukti Knolls that a friend wonders about. Yes, I believe they are. Keep your eyes peeled. As we move, we still want to keep an eye out for extra traps. So you start moving cautiously towards this creature. After about 40-50 feet, you haven't detected any other trap, and you're now close enough to see that this trapped creature is a tiefling woman. You can see that she's got this captivating beauty, her appearance an enchanting blend of natural grace and otherworldly allure, her tiefling heritage a canvas of artistic expression, every feature harmoniously coming together to create a mesmerizing whole. Her skin carries a delicate hue of soft lavender, reminiscent of twilight's embrace, hinting at her ethereal connection to the mystical energies of the Neverwinter Woods. She possesses a lithe and graceful frame, and upon her brow two dainty horns curve gently outward, resembling delicate spirals of ivory. These gracefully frame her face, accentuating her radiant, heart-shaped countenance. We also see that her eyes are large and entrancing, a deep shade of emerald green that mirrors the last foliage of the woods you've been traversing. Her hair of rich plum cascades down her back like a waterfall of rich verdant vines, woven with strands of flowers and tiny shimmering crystals, which seem to capture and reflect the sunlight, creating a captivating display of colours, which dance with every movement as she dangles from this tree. You notice that her attire is a whimsical fusion of natural and mystical elements, as she wears a crown crafted from layers of fabric in various shades of green and blue, like the shifting hues of leaves in a sun-dappled glade. Intricate floral patterns, delicately embroidered along the hem and sleeves. You also notice that around her waist, a braided leather belt holds vials and pouches and small woven baskets, brimming with an array of herbs, flowers and alchemical components. And that's where we're going to call it a session. Damn you. Damn you, you rat! (laughs) (laughs) Let me pull her down. Let me save her. You'll have to wait till the next session for that. I know who this is. I'm sure our listeners do too. You're going to have to wait and tune in next week to find out if this is Gookie. Al is having a bit of a nervous fit here. <laughs> Wiping the sweat from his brow. I wonder if she was coming or going. Probably coming. As if she would have been going five days ago. She would probably be... <laughs> probably be dead by now. Yeah. At least for now, you haven't seen any gnolls. Hmm. They must be hiding in the trees, I imagine. Mm. Waiting to spring out and attack us. Good thing you've got that plus ten. Yeah, but I'm thinking things. Don't want to leave all these traps here for other people to fall prey to. Wouldn't be the way of shoe shrubberies. I think this is an inevitable fight. Perhaps, but as I said before, we're going to have to tune in next week to see what happens as we delve into the dungeon. Will shoe shrubberies be ambushed? Is this gooky? You'll have to tune in for episode 51. 
And if you'd like to hear us talk a little bit more about today's episode, make sure you head on over to i2td.com where we've got links to our Buy Me A Coffee page. And you can subscribe to one of our membership tiers where you get access to our bonus episodes where we reflect on today's session. We also give you a, a glimpse in those bonus episodes of what we've been working on or what we've been up to in the last week. And also there in Buy Me A Coffee, in our Buy Me A Coffee, you will find different items you can donate. We have a shop there and you can donate potions or other items like swords, plus one swords and stuff like that. If you want to help us choose shrubberies in our mission to defeat this damned dragon. It will allow you to become part of the adventure and it will also help us as the podcasters that we are to further our podcasting adventure. So hope that you can donate some. And if you cannot, don't worry, because you can also help us by commenting, leaving reviews, subscribing, liking, all that good stuff in all our social media and YouTube and any podcast player of your choice where you choose to listen to us. So thank you very much for all of that. This week we don't have a Twitter Twitter because we've been hard at work getting our cushion back after a short holiday. Mm-hmm. More of which will be on our Into the Studio episodes on Buy Me A Coffee. And so that takes us to the last one standing. Straight to it. This is episode 50, so you know what to do by now. We'll give you a password and you insert it in any sort of comment. You can try to make us laugh, make us cry, make us feel stuff, good stuff. Everything's game. It's been heating up in recent times. There's quite a stiff and vicious competition going on amongst our password users. So if you fancy a chance of becoming a Gijo of Mass Brother in our Discord group and having your comment plastered in one of our channels for prosperity, make sure to give it a go. It's good fun. What's today's password, Alan? This week's episode is Booby Trap. Obviously, because I've spotted quite a few booby traps or traps just now at the end of the episode and also for that unfortunate prank i pulled on fena where i in good gesture with good faith implied that she should breastfeed badgers in her mind (laughs) (laughs) well there you have it booby trap we look forward to seeing your use of that password in in your comments without further ado it's time to bid you farewell and hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you join us next week as we delve into into the the dungeon. dungeon. He was speaking to a mosquito, huh? <laughs> that entered his mouth. Almost. <laughs> Imagine yourself as a beaver. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to confuse, as Neil said.